welcome to my uh, channel, <laughs> Reaching Books, etc. My name is Cristina and I come to you from Lisbon, Portugal. So today I'm here not to freak out because uh, this is the so-called media freaking out book day um, and I, for some time I didn't understand why everyone was freaking out. And I said, but why? why? And I even didn't look at the tag because of the name. But then I saw that so many people were doing it, even booktubers I like a lot. So I decided to look at them. And it's not a freaking out thing. It's just to more or less assess your reading in the middle of the year. So here I am. Um, to do mine. So there are some, uh, I saw that some people, there are some slight variations in the questions, especially in the last one. Some people have 15, some 14, some 13. I'm going to do the 13 that almost everyone is doing. So the first one says, best book you've read so far in 2021. So I'll have to go with uh, this one here, which I showed you several times, and again, joining this, the second question says the best sequel, and here it is. Uh, to be truthful, this is only one book, uh, and there is a third part, but I'm considering it as book and sequel. So these were. This was quite a surprise. Uh, there's a bookshop that opened here next to my house. And the first time I went inside, I um, they have only one bookshelf with um, what they call foreign books. So there are some in French and the great majority is in English. And I was browsing that bookshelf and um, there was this book there, so I picked it up. I liked it because it is uh, it has the two languages, so the original in one page and the translation in the other. And um, the reviews and say that it's a very good translation, and it looks like it. So I decided to buy it. It was my the book bought in a bookshop, the first book in a lot, a long, long time. And so it was a complete surprise. I loved it. And then, of course, I followed immediately with this one. And I think that perhaps I loved it even more. But I cannot um, separate them. And so here it is. I am now reading the third part, which is Paradise or Paradiso. And I'm so glad that I found this book. Uh, so number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. So I have no idea because I don't follow book prizes. I don't follow new releases. I don't normally read very mm, modern stuff, things from recent times. So, um, except for some perhaps crime fiction, so or whodunits, I like them a lot, and I also like fantasy, and I also like uh, science fiction, and I also <laughs> like historical fiction, but so those types of books are the ones that I read if they are written in present time nowadays so the rest I tend to read old stuff but and I recently acquired a book that I wanted to for a long time I actually considered having this in French and so I um, opted to have the book in French in digital form 
and then I bought the English translation um, and I, I want to read this this is a non-fiction book and I want to read it one essay at a time so throughout a long long time and this is the book so uh, not a new release not uh, but for me it's a new book and I really want I have already uh, read some bits of this somewhere else but now I have the whole thing and I intend to read it so then the other question says most anticipated release for the second half of the year again I have no idea uh, biggest disappointment so I'm sorry I'm going to look like a broken record but uh, the disappointment I had was the invisible life of Eddie LaRue and I already mentioned this book hundreds of times but the reason why it was a disappointment it was that it had so many five-star reviews and so many people I know and follow says that they found it fantastic many people even voted the best book from the previous year and so on and so forth and the premise was interesting because the story it's the story of a woman who was not happy a girl 17 i think she is she was not happy with her life she was being pressured to uh, get married to a man she didn't like that type of and she wanted to escape that life and she found a mysterious being that um, answered her request so what he did was he made her immortal first of all and then but then as a almost a kind of a countermeasure uh, he made her completely forgetful what does that mean <coughs> <coughs> it means that no one ever remembers her the minute they move their eyes from her they forget her and so this is the beginning of the story and we see how her life goes then there's a moment in time where someone remembers her and this would be or look to be very interesting because uh, why why does this person remember her I couldn't I don't know why I, I don't know if the beginning of the book until this moment was very uninteresting to me perhaps it was too repetitive I don't know why but I couldn't care less so I don't know why this person uh, remember her remembers her because I just gave up on the book biggest surprise so again this will all be repeats here but I never I had never read Faulkner and I in May I participated in a read-along and I read this book and I found it fantastic so good that I am now reading The Sound and the Fury and it's a lot more difficult to follow uh, although very very interesting in my opinion but I say that this guy like to uh, mess with our brains or at least like like to force us to use our brains uh, I like books where we have to like the story is a little bit like a puzzle I do enjoy that type of book so I'm not horrified with the way the narrative in the Sun and Fury is because I do like to piece things together 
but it's not easy it's it's a uh, for me it's been i have read two parts of four i think and the second part is very very difficult i have to reread it several times i think okay but that was a surprise because i really didn't know this author and i'm now i'm i look forward to uh, Faulkner in August, well, where I'm going to read Sanctuary with so many people. Favorite, ah, there is another, I wrote here, another surprise was, I am participating in a read-along or challenge uh, that was organized by Mark uh, at Book Time with Elvis, and he um, used the pretext of the Euro 2020 to uh, organize um, a read-along where each person, uh, each participant was um, given a country to follow and we had to read a book from that country. If our team lost, we would read a book from the country with whom our team lost and then of course when those the countries were eliminated we adopted uh, uh, the new a new country so the team I was uh, um, first uh, given was Turkey and perhaps you know but Turkey lost everything so first of all I read some I found online First, I found online a novel, but the novel was uh, perhaps a bit long because it was in the first part and we had to, the games were very uh, close to each other. So I decided that I wouldn't uh, read the novel because it was too much. And also, to be truthful, it was um, an historical novel where we saw um, there were some conflicts and... Uh, Sorry, uh, it was, I think, in the First World War, and um, in we are in Istanbul, and uh, we see the consequences of the war, and how things were, and um, also some tragedies, and how the they were. Lots of people were killed. And uh, so it was a qu quite of a tragic uh, text, but at least I learned a bit of history. I uh, I didn't read the book; I skimmed it, and I learned a bit of history of Turkey there. Then I also learned, while searching for information, I learned um, a bit about the language, and I was. If you aren't amazed by the fact that they changed their alphabet to the Roman alphabet, I don't know in the in the beginning. So at the time, the twentieth century, I think, and I was I couldn't believe it because how come that someone a uh, people that were used for centuries to some symbols and then they changed this uh, the system? Amazed amazed me. So what I did was I decided to just read some poems I found online uh, which were quite forgetful to be truthful. So maybe I was not very invested on um, that. But then Turkey lost against uh, every other country in the group. So when they, when they lost against Italy I said well I am already reading, and I'm still I still am reading Paradiso, so that takes part that takes care of the Italy part. But then they lost against uh, Wales as well, and I picked a book, which is by Dylan Thomas, which is a book of short stories. So I read uh, three or four short stories, and I intend to read the rest because I like them a lot, actually. Um, the perspective, the, the book is called uh, Portrait of uh, the Artist as 
a young dog, I think. And the stories I read are on the perspective of a young boy and they are so good because I can see the boy. I mean, uh, the way he interacts, the way he's, for example, playing in a place where there are adults and he's listening even in the middle of the play he listens and uh, responds to what the uh, adults are saying fascinating because i have many uh, nieces and nephews and i i have i've had all my life of course i have a son as well but i remember when i was a kid uh, observing my nieces and nephews and now I have grand nieces and grand nephews and it's so good the way he he uh, builds this character the main character and everything else around him very good so that was for Wales and then the biggest surprise for me was for Switzerland so when Turkey lost against Switzerland I decided to read Heidi. Well, Heidi was a book I read when I was a child and I remember that I had to fight to read it and I'll explain why. My mother had, has always had prejudice against abridgments. I too, I don't like abridged books and I don't read them, but those books were children's books and I don't even know if they were abridged but the what happened was that they had the text in the right side so the odd pages and on the even pages they were graphic novels so they had uh, the drawings as a graphic novel had and my mother used to say that she didn't like those books because we wouldn't be reading the whole text we would only read uh, the graphic novel and so she didn't allow those books at my house or at least we couldn't buy them and there was a a, a big uh, library of those books here in portugal i don't know what the publisher was i don't remember but i i I do remember the books and so I very much wanted to read those books and sometimes I managed to get uh, someone to lend me some of those books and I read and the book I remember reading was Heidi and then of course I saw also a film on TV and then there was also a Japanese anime if you want that uh, very famous here which was again uh, called Heidi and it was the Heidi character so for me it was a surprise I decided to read Heidi I read it I don't know two sittings it was a quick read and I loved the book so it was uh, a surprise because I didn't know I would like it so much so then Heidi, Heidi was also a surprise and this challenge that Mark organized and still goes on because the Euro is not finished, uh, it's been the most fun of these things on booktube, on booktube that I have followed. So the group of people that are participating are amazing, very fun and the, the, the suggestions of the books. I think Mark is going to do then uh, a list of all the books we read and mentioned. So it's going to be very good because there are lots of suggestions of books. Uh, some people in the group are very well read. And uh, so, it's, it's, but it's been so, so fun. I'm so grateful that Mark decided to do this challenge and um, I think that the other participants are too, so. All right, um, favorite new author, debut or new to you? So, uh, here, one favorite new author is 
I'm Bronte. So I am participating in the Bronte project uh, organized by Marisa in blatantly bookish channel and uh, we are supposed to read all of the Bronte novels uh, this year. So I mm, I read I read uh, what did I read? You know, Shirley in the last October and Jane Eyre as well. So I decided not to pick them now because uh, they were, I think, the choices of for June and July or August, I don't know. But uh, I decided not to pick uh, those two books because I, I read them very, very recently. So, but all the other books I decided to to read. So I read Villette, which is a long book by Charlotte Bronte and um, many people don't like it much, but I did. I did like the book. And then I read The Professor, which is funny enough, it's a good parallel to Villette because it's a similar thing. We have the main uh, protagonist, so the protagonists uh, of both books are people that go to a foreign country, in this case we know it's Belgium, because it's it was the experience of Charlotte Bronte, she too went there to teach in a school and so this happens to the protagonist of these two books. In Villette there is a girl that goes and uh, uh, to live in Villette, which is the place where she goes as a teacher. And in the second book, The Professor, the same thing happens, but it's a man. So it's the, the perspective of uh, the difference is that the characters, one is a woman, one, the other is a man. I like both of the books. Um, the Professor is much shorter than the, the other one and it's perhaps lighter. And then I read Anne Grey, which again, in this case, uh, uh, the, the girl, the main, uh, the protagonist goes to be, uh, how is it, governess, I think that's how it's called. So she goes into uh, houses of people and to be the teacher of their children. I think that also this was based on the experience of and Bronte and this is a whole different type of book but I think that this is one of the favorite when when picking the favorite your favorite book of this first half of the year I was this was one of the choices I had but then I decided with the Divine Comedy because it's a, perhaps a larger more uh, um, I don't know, whole book if you want, uh, and but this was amazing and I loved it. So this is a new favorite for me. Unfortunately, she only wrote these two novels because as we know, they all died very young and I think Anne was 28 or 29 when she died. Um, there, I also found two new authors, authors for me, which were I found them in in December. I took part in the Dagger, Cloak and Dagger uh, December riddle where we were supposed to read lots of mysteries. And also in March, Miss, uh, I took also part of really, I love whodunits and things like that. And so I found two authors. One was Anthony Horowitz. Uh, I read five or six of his books, all mystery books, so... And um, the other author was Kate Atkinson. And I read two of her Brody, James Brody, I think is his name, series. And then I read two other books of her. The first one was Transcription, and the other one was Life After Life. And those two books are also the Brody books are a little bit like that. 
where the narrative is not linear so there are jumps in times and as i said before we are i like those types of puzzle books where we are always mo moving forward and backwards and so on so and i love her book so i am now i think uh, the, there is a kind of a book um, a second book in the life after a life it's about a family and there's another book about the same family which is called a god in ruins i think and i want to read that book as well because i do like her books and i also have some more books in her brody uh, um, series the detective uh, series so newest fictional crush so i don't normally have crushes i don't remember if when i was young i had but if i have to choose one of them might be adam beat i liked so i'm also taking part of the george Eliot read along and i am now reading uh the mill on the floss but i read two books before adam bead and silas manor and i i also liked silas manor a lot but adam bead was a fantastic character and i liked him very much uh but then you have uh, where is it new newest favorite character and so this could also be Adam Bede, but in this book here, which I read at the beginning of the year, there is a, a character which is, I love him a lot. He is called uh, Razumihin, okay? And he is, if you want, the friend of the main character. And Raza is fantastic. I love him a lot. So that is my newest favorite character. Oh, now I lost my <clears throat> place here. So book that made you cry. I don't think I read any book that made me cry. I, 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 I was trying to remember and I don't, I don't remember crying over a book this. Part. then number 11 book that made you happy and this question puzzled me a bit because every book that I'm reading makes me happy I love reading and I love talking about books and I love thinking about the books I'm reading or that I read so all books make me happy uh, perhaps Adila Rue didn't but all the others did most beautiful book you've bought so far this year so this is a bit of uh, intersection with the book to made me do it because 100 percent booktubes um thing mainly one booktuber which is Michael K. Vaughan from the Vaughan Manor because he showed us his shelves and I fell in love with one with one no with three books mainly that he has there which are the new annotated Sherlock Holmes and also I got so so interesting in those books that I want them I didn't get them yet so <clears throat> hopefully maybe <clears throat> at the end of the year I will have them but he also mentioned many other books and showed many other books on his shelves so one of the things he started at the beginning of his channel he talked a lot about HP Lovecraft as a classic in horror um, fiction I haven't read any horror fiction until now so I thought that why not start with the classics because I do love classics so he also showed us some annotated Lovecraft he has on his shelves 
So I decided, well, if I'm going to start, I'm going to start in style. Unfortunately, the cover of the book I got is not, I don't like it because he has this book in his one of his shelves and he has a fantastic uh, cover mine hasn't they decided to ch oops sorry this was they decided to change and this is not half as beautiful as his work so this is the new annotated H hp lovecraft and the, the editor and annotator is Leslie S. Klinger, which is the same that does those uh, Sherlock Holmes books, which I want. But this is a massive book. And this book is interesting, so very beautiful, because first of all, I like the, the pages, they are yellow pages with cap and um, they have this how do you call it now i cannot remember the 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 name of the first letter is like this and uh, it has hundreds of photos and drawings and of course lots and lots of information about the author and the stories because it's an annotated edition and so i'm going to start reading some hp lovecraft uh, from uh, this edition but of course because i am a little bit obsessive and com a completist if you want i got the other second volume and this has a lovely cover as well so the first one should be also with a black background and some uh, drawings this one has the original one so this is also the same editor the same and it's called uh, beyond arkham because i haven't read any of the stories yet i have no idea what that is so this uh, book arrived two days ago i think um and because because i wanted and this was my I'll be I'll turn 58 next Friday so this was part of my birthday present to me along with two other books which are the the contents of the book is beautiful the covers I don't consider them very beautiful but the contents is amazing and they are of course again the annotated version amazing in uh, the contents of the book we have um lots of lots of pictures drawings images uh discussions here uh has the comparison between the 1818 and the 1831 uh versions of the text amazing book and today the last one of my present to myself arrived and again amazing uh, book so these are the most beautiful books I got this year and what books do you need to read by the end of the year so um, I didn't understand this question but then I I don't need to read or I need to read all the books so you can choose between those two answers. The fact is that, of course, when I was at university many, many decades ago, I needed to read, I had to, and it was not very uh, funny. Actually, I, I rem I, nowadays, sometimes I think that I would like to go uh, to, the, to the university and attend some of the classes uh, just as a, um, not to be evaluated or to do my course but just to listen to and to read the books they ask us to read and do it just for pleasure because I think that being forced to do something 
all at least to me it always makes me rebel a bit and uh, uh, I never like to be forced to do something even with mm. things I like to do like for example I said already I'm a knitter I love knitting but if someone asks me I always say to need something for them I always say no because I know that I am even I love to need things for other people but if they ask me or if I'm forced to do in some way I just can't and I give up and uh, it's a chore it's a sacrifice and it takes all the pleasure from the, the activity so I prefer uh, to do it by myself voluntarily the same with reading so but as a matter of fact I love to read with others I didn't know that I am a very um, individualist person in the sense that I am very well by myself and uh, read what I want when I want and so on but I'm enjoying a lot to participate in read-alongs and buddy reads and this year well I already talked about the books I'm reading in July so I'm not going to repeat that but I'm also participating in several uh, buddy reads and reads along read-alongs uh, during the year uh, so uh, I'm not going to mention that now I will mention in my regular uh, videos when I talk about what I'm going to read but it's been so fun and I'm enjoying it a lot and I am very grateful for all the booktubers that do those videos and um, have great ideas uh, for uh, read-alongs and uh, buddy reads and so on it's a fantastic community <coughs> that I am enjoying a lot to be part of so with that note I'll finish this tag here I think I've been talking and talking and talking for a long time and I hope to see you soon bye bye